Oi oi oi, welcome back to a brand new video And I just want to start off by thanking you all for 500 subscribers We're almost at 600 at this point But anyways, remember to like and subscribe, follow me on Twitter And let's get right into the video so first off in today's episode I decided to texture my paths after I saw a comment on the screen right now So basically I'm just adding in some rooted dirt to texture the path Then I added some railing along the sides And then I thought I needed to fix up the entrance to the bee farm so I made this big custom tree And I think it turned out pretty well But basically what I'm doing to make these trees I'm just basically adding some random oak logs and then adding leaves and Fences around for smaller branches And custom trees is one of those things that just adds a lot of character to your world Continuing on the theme of tidying things up around here I decided to clear out this forest on the hillside And then I thought it was a good idea to terraform the hill so it looked a bit more natural And I'm thinking about filling this area out with fields later and then just to keep it a bit more interesting, I worked on this cliffside right here. Guys, just look at how different this area looks now. I think it looks a lot better. I really like the slope and this little cliffside here I'm really, really happy with. And so the idea here is to fill out this whole slope with a bunch of fields and then leading up to the village that we'll plan out later in this episode. On another note though, just look at how much better this looks than the last entrance. I really didn't like the archway design I had up there, so I think adding in a tree kind of like this just makes it look a bit more nice. And it also fits with the kind of greenhouse and overgrown aesthetic around here. And then I also added in some beehives right here, as you can see. And I think these really fit in well here. And down here in our lovely greenhouse cave, sort of, I'm thinking we're going to add a few more organic type farms around. So that could be sugarcane, bamboo, or even moss farm. But that will have to be for later though. And if you have any suggestions on other farms that I could add around there, please tell me in the comments below. Anyways guys, let's move on to this guy. And if you remember in episode 3, I asked you guys for name suggestions for this guy. I got two replies for that. One was Flam and the other one was Bagel. And since I got Bagel first, that will be the name for this guy. And this is where we run into a problem. I don't have any name tags. But fortunately, that'll mean we have to go on a really fun adventure. So let's kick things right off and do that right now. So this was the first cave I went into. I really couldn't find much here. I stumbled upon a mine shaft though, which was pretty good, but I realized I had already been in there. So a bunch of dead ends essentially. All right, so I couldn't find anything in that other cave, so let's check this one out. We want to be careful with the creepers, for sure. Let's just run away, let's run away. I'm not sure where this leads, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, there's a big cave here. That's very cool. And it looks like there's some kind of iron vein right there. That's really cool. And we are very far down now. So maybe there's some diamonds around. That would be really cool. Oh, there are some right here. Fantastic. And there's even more. But it doesn't look like there are any spawners around. I'll continue looking for a while and I'll come back to you guys. And just as I said that, there's a spawner. That's quite lucky, actually. Some bones. Let's hope for a name tag. Oh, spiders. Let's be very careful here. And there's a name tag. Fantastic. Ah, spider. Let's get all of this stuff and run away quickly. Run. Now, let's see if we can find our way out of here. Ah, oh, there we go. No more zombies or pesky creepers. Ugh. And let's name this guy Bagel. There we go. Until I build a better house for this guy, I'll just put him inside of here. There we go. And bam! Welcome to the family. Alright guys, so dog names aside, I want to work a bit more on this villager breeder. Because as you can see, we have a great collection system here. But it kind of just goes off into nothing. So the idea here is to make a curing center so we can zombify these guys and then cure them to get a really good deal on our trades. 
All right, guys, so right about here, I'm thinking we have a zombie chamber. So we're going to trap a zombie in here, and then he'll kill the villager. He'll be converted to a zombie. Then we'll make a nice little curing center over here, I think. All right, so I just set up my first little curing spot right here. And then we're going to have three more of these. Basically, the only thing you do is go like this, stone up, and then just another rail. Okay, guys, so I'm finally done with this setup thing. And now the only thing we need to do is get a zombie in here. But we can't get any old regular zombie because he will despawn. So what we have to do is try to throw some stone to it. And if it picks it up, it's a zombie that can't despawn. So since it's night now, let's see if we can find any zombies. Can you pick up stone? That's a bummer. Stone pickers, anybody? No. Can you pick up stone, please? Nope. Oh! We got a stone picker. Let's go. Now you can follow me. Now you just need to walk into this hole, please. There we go. So what we do now is we make a weakness potion so we can actually convert the villagers. So we need three water bottles and a fermented spider eye. All right, let's add the gunpowder to make this splash potion. Alright, so just a quick little tip for you guys, you can actually throw a sword to the zombie and that means he'll kill the villagers faster. So just so I can show you guys the process, I'll actually convert four villagers and then cure them afterwards. There we go, one converted. Alright, so we've got all of our converted villagers in place. So let's throw down a weakness potion and then we'll cure them with golden apples. Then we go bam, bam. Bam, bam. Now just have to wait and they'll be cured. All right, so what we do now though, is we're going to make this room a bit nicer. So let's grab some materials and we'll clean up this area so it doesn't look so stony and square kind of. So first I'd like some pillars on the sides here. Oh yes, there we go. Our first villager has been converted, finally. So as you can see, he's now a villager. But anyways, I will finish up tidying up this area. So let's go ahead and keep doing that. And then we'll check back on the villagers. So for the entrance here, I would like a Gruben house. And I'll have a picture for you on screen right now. And this is basically a Anglo-Saxon kind of storage vault for food and general stuff, basically. I think that would fit really nice because, you know, I have the turf roof back on the mine entrance and also on the barn over there. So I think that would fit nicely in with the area. But let's go ahead and build that right now and now we just fill in the sides with grass so I'm thinking I'm going to mix in some moss with the grass so I'm just quickly going to gather up some moss so I mostly want to get some moss around the edges here so it doesn't look so rough as you can see right there let's get some flowers on here now I'm thinking we make the ceiling out of oak stairs, just to have a nice contrast from the outside. Now just want to make a nice path leading down here. Right, so I'm thinking we make the walls out of stripped oak logs. I think that fits in quite nicely. Alright, so this is where I'm currently at. I think I'm really liking this so far. Now I'd like to add some rooted dirt up in the ceiling and add some hanging roots. I think that could look really cool. Something like that looks really nice. Let's add some sign in here. And let's put some lanterns in the roof. There we go. Now this area is nicely lit up. And maybe a nice flower pot right here. So this is the final result. We enter into this nice house and we got some details, roots in the roof. We got our villagers, of course. And then this leads into the actual villager breather. And then here is where the minecart shoots up. The villagers come through here. It's zombified, of course. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this area. So let's move on to our next thing. All right, so now that we have our villager breather fixed up, I think it's time we send these guys into their home. So I just want to extend this rail into there, as you can see. All right, so right here I've prepared a few spots for the librarians to go. So let's get them in here. First guy in place. Now let's see what kind of trades we can get on these guys. So I spent some time down here and finally I got mending on this guy. So let's trade with them to lock the trade. And look guys, this trade even came with an advancement. Fantastic. 
So we're back here guys and I've spent a longer time than I dare to admit Just trying to get some good things set up around here So what I've done is basically re-roll these villagers a bunch of times Until I've gotten traits that I'm pretty much happy with And I've also set up a way for us to get some emeralds I'll show you that later though So first guy, mending Which is really really important in Minecraft Especially if you want to last a long time And our next guy we got some efficiency 5, which is really useful, although I already have that on all of my tools. This guy, we have protection 4, really good, once again. And last guy, we got unbreaking 3, which also is a really important enchant, especially so you can get that stuff on your elytra. But I did realize later, though, that I have unbreaking 3 up here, and then another one down here. I spent over 30 minutes trying to get unbreaking 3 on this guy, and then I realized after trading with him for a bit... That he had another one. What are the odds of that? That's so insane. And so the other thing I've been doing is I cured up another batch of uh, zombified villagers. And then I made it a nice little room over here. That of course I'll make this look a bit nicer in the future. And I made all of these guys cartographers. And the reason for that is because they have this trait. You can basically convert glass paints into emeralds. Four of them for one emerald. And that is really, really good because librarians basically trade glass for free. So for one emerald, you can get four glass blocks. And if you didn't know, you can convert glass blocks into glass panes and you get 16 of them for only 6 glass blocks. And now we can go ahead and trade these with the cartographers and we get a lot of emeralds. So now though, before we do anything else, I would like to decorate this interior. That is so it can be a bit nicer when we walk in here to trade with the villagers. So starting off, I just want to take out this ugly grass floor and replace it with something nicer. And that nicer block is warp planks. Now I'm using these warp planks because I think it gives off a more magical vibe, which fits in quite nicely with these librarians over here. Now for the kitchen though, I think we do some kind of checkered pattern with stone bricks and stone. Let's get some bookshelves in here because this is after all the librarian's house. Maybe a scaffolding block with a barrel on top. Alright, so in here though by the villagers, instead of putting another villager here like I originally planned, I think we could put a nice bookshelf in here, storing all their magic books and stuff. So I'm thinking we go something like this, then we strip that, put our bookshelves in here, then we can go with a nice trap door, and we'll put some barrels or something up here. Alright, so I'm thinking two barrels, and then we go with a leaf block right there. On second thought though, I think it would be better with something like a crafting table up here. Now let's do a nice little table right here. With a lantern and a flower pot. Now let's do some more bookshelves on this wall. And then a table with another flower pot. Let's get some floating shelf action in here. But now let's move back here and decorate our kitchen. So first I want to start with getting another composter in here. Just to divide the kitchen and this common area a bit more. So starting off let's get some barrels on top of here. And then underneath I'm thinking some beehives. And then right here I'm thinking I'm going to do my regular herb trick. So that means planting some carrots or beetroots or something here at some later point. Let's get some ladders in here for additional support. And then right here, a crafting bench and a cauldron. And then I'm thinking a nice table where you can just sit and chill here in the kitchen. And on second thought, I think I want to remove this one. And place it right here. Let's get a nice shelf in here though. With a lantern. And then maybe some candles right here in the kitchen. And that, my friends, will wrap up our kitchen. And maybe we can get another bookshelf in here. Then let's do stairs underneath. And then we can go with some trapdoors on the sides here. I think that fits in quite nicely. And also with this loom to make it look like a empty bookshelf. And then to fill out this wall, I'm thinking we can do a painting right here. Let's get the thin one. There we go. And another painting above the dining table. Very cool. Now this area is looking quite nice already. But let me cut into a montage where I finish up the interior. So starting off here, I decided to work on a guest bedroom, which I think turned out pretty cool. Then moving on to the master bedroom with three beds, one for the kids and one for the owners. And then just making a nice little desk setup, adding in a few bits more of detail. Then I moved on to the third floor, adding some support and a ladder up to the tower. 
And then I just randomly plotted down some bookshelves, barrels, lecterns and general decoration blocks and that was it. Alright guys, so I'm pretty much done furnishing up the entire house and I'll quickly give you guys a rundown of what it looks like. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So firstly we have our very very cool trading hall here, we got a nice bookshelf design and of course our very cool villagers with the most amazing of trades there are. And then heading in here we have a nice flow section in here and then we have the cool kitchen with our oven and our dining table of course and our nice little herb trick that we did. Heading upstairs now, the first thing we see is this room, we got some nice curtains on the sides here. And then we have a small guest bedroom that I'm really really happy with. And then some nice living areas. And then we have this bedroom. We got a nice double sized bed. And then we have this one for children or something like that. Now this is not where it ends. Because if you go up this ladder, you'll come to the third floor. And as you can see right here, I just made a nice working area for the librarians. So they can work, write their books, do whatever they need to do. And then there's another ladder up here. Which leads up to our tower where you can watch the view from here. And this room is just some general storage that I made. But I still think it looks really nice in here. Now though, what I want to get to is this room, because this is going to be a bookstore and I'm really really excited for this one because I think this will turn out really cool. So I'm thinking we start off with a nice bookshelf here in this corner, something like this. And then in here I would like some kind of reception so they can actually pay for the books. So something like this I really really like. And then we can add the chair for them to sit on, right there. Then let's put a plant right here. Let's do a double tall one. And then a nice bookshelf right here, and a barrel, some more bookshelves, and I really want this area to feel cramped. So let's do a table right here, and a shelf on top, with the lantern. And then let's do a lectern right here, and then let's do the good old loom trick to make it look like there's an empty bookshelf. And then maybe a flower pot to symbolize where they would put coins to pay for the book. There we go. And guys, that is going to have to be it for the bookstore and the whole house, actually. But anyways, let's move on. Right, so moving on, I decided to work a bit on a field right here, using birch leaves or a border to the allium field. I think this one turned out pretty great, and it adds a lot of character to our world. Right, so then I decided to work a bit more on these fields here. This is just so I can breed up a bunch more cows and sheep around here. And I really like this design, using a bunch of mossy cobblestone, even moss blocks in there. And I think it overall turned out pretty great. Alright guys, I'm back here live on the microphone and... I'm really thinking this area is shaping up to be something really, really cool here. And to be honest, I think this area is actually really adequate for a village now. So before we can get started building here, I think we need to plan out what the village will look like. And so the best way to do that, of course, is gathering up a bunch of colorful concrete so we can place down blocks and we know where everything will go. So let's gather some sand and gravel to make concrete. So concrete in hand now, I think it's time to plan out this village. So I have three colors of concrete right here, and I'm thinking these three will represent kind of how rich the house will be. So blue is for upper class, orange is middle class, and red is lower class. So let's get started on our house here right by the road, and I'm thinking this one's going to be an upper class home. Starting off with our first building, this is a tailor's home, and adding an indication of economy and profession to all of your houses just makes them feel a bit more real and realistic, because, you know, not all towns will have a bunch of nice upper-class buildings and they will need some people working in the town, making the economy go around. And another thing to make your towns a lot better is adding diagonal buildings and make them feel a bit more real and not as stiff and square. You know, in Minecraft, everything is about making the game feel less blocky and another thing that can help with that is building on a slope. And then just adding in paths right here and then I planned out for a nice market in the middle of the town. And also dotting in a few buildings on the outskirts is really cool to make the town feel real. And overall I'm pretty happy with this one. 
So I'm finally done planning this village out and it's not a very detailed plan but I think I'm going to add a few more details and extensions and stuff to all of these buildings to make them look a bit more interesting. But anyways now I think it's time we put some signs in these buildings to give them a purpose. So I'm thinking this guy will be some kind of tailor or clothes seller so let's go with that. There we go. And then this guy can be a good old farmer I think would be cool. And let's do another farmer right here. And then for this building, I'm thinking this guy will be a carpenter since he's so close to the forest. And I think I might change the class for this guy so he's a bit more middle class rather than poor. And this building will be the smith. And this building right here, I'm thinking will be the inn or tavern. So let's go with that. Then in here, let's do another farmer. And then right here, I'm thinking I would like to make a nice bakery. So let's go with that. So heading up the hill now, I'm thinking this house will be some sort of mill, so like a water mill right here. And then right here, I'm going to make another house, kind of like this, a Gruben house. And now this guy will be the butcher. So one last thing guys, before this episode ends, I'd like to make a map of the area. So I can just watch the village and see what the plan looks like from above. And as you can see guys, it's looking really, really neat. So we've got our village here and I'm really, really happy with the layout. I think it's turning out to be great. And that is going to have to be it for today's episode. And thank you guys once again for 500 subscribers and the amazing support on the other videos. But anyways, peace out guys.